Greetings and salutations. I'm Maury Shep, and today we are going to be taking a look at the mod called Oni of the Rim. Uh, I was one of the mod creators of this uh, particular mod, and the point of this entire video is going to be just going over what it does, how it works, and what it changes in the base game. Uh, we're going to go with the yeah, we're going to go with the survive starting. So this is going to be the tribal start for this mod. We will make some slight adjustments uh, using a pair carefully. And we're going to go with our custom storyteller who is basically Randy Random if they just hate your guts all the time. <laughs> we're only going to go to medium because anything above there is really rough on the start. May tick it up as we go on. Grab no. Lagoon. Why not? The glory of editing and skipping over loading screens. Alright. So real fast here. On the map, you can already see that we have a few of the Oni structures already spawning in. Now these are the Oni Freeborn colonies. Uh, there is a hidden faction that also might drop you some uh, refugees and slaves throughout the period of your gameplay. But these guys here... They start off with a fairly low base opinion of the player characters. The reason for that is, regardless of how you start, the Oni lore sticks to the following concept. Uh, they are very valuable in the fact that they produce a natural drug within their horns. So they are hunted by most other factions for this chemical. So most of these outside factions will not like you. Just start off with that concept. Uh, so be mindful if you go and place your thing nearby, you may have to deal with them a little earlier than you would like. I'm just going to look for a nice spot near a road. Ah, that's a good spot. 3060? Ah, that's good. Alright. So you may notice right off the bat, we've got a health condition that is popping in. That is a passive health event that is going to boost your sight, manipulation, and carry capacity. For any Oni. Uh, the important detail there is that effect is consistent and constant and is not viewed as a bad trait. Although the flag there does come up in red when it says whole body, it is in green everywhere else. So it's not going to give you a mood debuff for being sick. Oh, our traitors addicted to alcohol. That's not going to work. And you are into the feather leaf, right? So we are going to swap you and you. Where is that the druggy? You know what? We'll just remove the druggy problem. There we go. Backgrounds here, very simply put, there are childlike and adulthood backgrounds for these characters that have been pre-written and selected for their faction only. I'm using Prepare Carefully to show them off, really. Uh, so, each one of these available only for this type of character. Same deal with the adults. So you're not going to end up with an Oni who's supposed to be a tribal life form living on these rim worlds with some weird backstory of them living on a glitter world. That, that will not happen. Or it should not happen. Multiple hair types. Multiple hair colors. And of course we do have all the body types. So we have hulking, thin, heavy set, average. So your pawns should not look identical every single time. Now we actually rolled a lot of gray hair this time around. I'm okay with that though. Alright, so within the base mod we have a few key weapons that are added in. Not bringing animals. <laughs> uh, we have our blowgun here. Uh, this thing does toxic damage that basically will incapacitate large targets after a certain number of hits. Very useful if you are early in the game and you have a raging bunch of elephants running at you. However, it does take multiple hits, so you're not going to down an elephant in two shots. It's going to take you like 20. 
So having a few of these, very helpful. Weapons. Do, 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 do. Scale. There we go. I want to throw in a replacement melee weapon for the ones that I'm taking out real fast. There we go. No short. That should start us off. And we're in. Okay, so per normal, uh, one thing we always want to do whenever you're starting a new game, whether you're testing out a mod or not, uh, unforbid everything. I'm using the allow all mod so I can just hit a button and do that instantaneously. Serve for your environment. We've got mountains to the right, so that's going to keep things from attacking us from that side. So we've only got to worry about raids from the bottom, top, and this big front side. And that's mostly split by this mountain in the middle, so that's very nice. We can probably throw a wall there, a wall there, and pretty much this entire section to ourselves. I wish this growing area was a little closer to where I want to build. Hmm, all the steam guys are over there. So it looks like we're going to be setting up in this section. And probably tunnel our way into here. So any of you trigger the... No, okay. So what I'm looking for there is if they're going to start shedding feathers for me, which would be useful in the early game. But let's get these guys assigned their weapons. You're going to be melee. You're going to be melee. Melee. Ooh, you're bad at everything. And you're bad at everything. Right. Right. You get that. You get that. And you'll get better with that. You are never going to hit anything with that, Pete, uh, Pila. Alright, let's do the normal stuff here. Hmm. Really quickly, just throw it down my stockpile. Just so they get everything stashed off in here. Clear out some round work. Now, officially, the Oni do not care about sleeping on the grounds, so and they're not going to get that immediate debuff. They are very in touch with nature. However, you will get bonuses if they don't sleep on the ground, so. Still a positive side to getting them a shelter built up here pretty quickly. So we're just going to wall straight across. Alright, first bug of the bug of the rug. Ah, that is not from this. Okay. So we have no worries with that. I am running dev mode mostly just to identify any problems that come up. This is a development build of this mod, so there may or may not be some issues, but that was actually Harmony throwing up that one. So basically they tried to do something that was already being done. Okay, so they're now idle. Next thing we need to do is start looking at food preparations. So let's look over at production. We need to set up a nice little area. Mining that out for me, guys. There will be a good spot to set this up at. No good farming areas nearby. Low grade soil, low grade soil, low grade soil. Ooh, nasty. Right, we're going to be farming here, apparently. Just going to set up some quick 5x5s. Five five so 
Now, if you're familiar with the base game, of course, this is a lot of fields. But I am primarily going to be growing some stuff that is new with this mod. Before growing the stuff that is normally grown at the start of any game. And strawberry just because it doesn't go bad. Well, it goes bad, but it does need to be cooked. Who is my farmer? Ah, good, I got a bunch of you. Oh, you... Is your burning passion in handling or is it in shooting? It's in handling. Okay. I'll find you some bunny so that you won't get yourself killed. Right. Got some good wood going. These guys are beginning to clean and farm. So priorities right now. Although I'm doing this mostly for testing, we do need to actually play the game. So we do need to set up a kitchen area. That's what we're going to be digging out over here. They're mining over here right now. In fact, that's not really important. All right. Sadly, I have no really good miners, so you guys are going to have to struggle through that. Now, one of the key differences between the Oni and the base humans is firefighting. Um, they will fight fires, but they are very, very prone to being set on fire. Um, for that very reason, it is extremely important that if any of your pawns get anywhere near fire, you are paying attention and out to try to save them. Uh, they are basically 200% as uh, vulnerable to fire as the human pawns are. Making it very easy for them to die from fire damage. Explanation for that is they are covered in feathers, and if you've never seen a feather lit on fire before, that should have played for you. <laughs> right, they are now asleep, so let's do some more planning while they go through that. Yeah, planning, not building. Got a five by five there. The way I like setting up my freezers is a little different than most people. Actually, that is too thick. So I like my airlocks to be a little longer than most people do. This will be the wall of the freezer here. Which means the actual inside area is going to be just that. There we go, 13 by 5. And this will of course be a double wall on the inside here. I don't have to worry about that because there's a giant mountain. Uh, right here is going to line up with the wall that we're going to build on the outside. So basically, there will be wall here, and this area will basically let this vent outside for the cooler. Now we may do the same thing on the other side, it depends on what this room acts like. This will be the butcher side, this will be the actual kitchen side. The butcher side, <coughs> excuse me, real stream now. <laughs> butcher side has to, can be smaller than the actual normal side, uh, slightly different I'm sure than your most, most of you have seen. but the butcher room does not have to be as big. In fact, this one should be this way. And that'll still be a wall. So this will be an empty corridor here, which means I can have a door here, here, here. And this room will stay cooler because it won't have as many people running in and out of it because both sides will be accessing to the same entry point. My way of doing it, not sure if it's actually better than any other way. Haven't really done good testing, I just prefer doing it that way. This central line here will be the emergency cooler if I need to cool off the airlock itself. 
should not be needed. And they are now all actively going at that. Uh, they're actually using an extremely slow speed, but I have this thing turned up to speed 4, which is not normally available to you in base game. Wildlife, what do we got? Go get some raccoon meat, guys. There, quick door there. You can already see how this room is going to shape up real fast. And we'll cut in there to add the, the cooler later. We currently do not have that technology, so that is another thing we're going to need real quick. Grab a research desk, throw it down here in the corner. Need some steel for that. Not a problem. Those who don't know, if you right click, you can mine all selected orders, and that's not a mod thing. That's in the base game as of 1.0. Very useful. It used to be a mod only thing, but it's nice now. Alright, time to throw down the stockpile in here. So you're all, we're gonna put food in there, we're not gonna put kibble, we're not gonna put hay. But we are gonna put in animal corpses. And we do not want to allow rot. Temporary door. Alright, there. So, what you saw right there drop on the floor is feathers. Uh, they are beginning to shed them, so that will periodically happen. Uh, it's powered by a script that's running in the background at all times. And every now and again, an Oni will decide to shed feathers, just basically they're old feathers that are now dying off and falling off them. You can collect those, make them into different clothing and garments. In fact, all of these guys are currently wearing a feathered wrap, which has some beneficial properties to it. Uh, you can also make those wraps out of any material. The stuffed version will have slightly better defensive stats, whereas the feather one is lighter, easier to carry around, and of course lets you move a little faster. They hit steel in here. Slow them down a bit. Someone is hunting those animals, right? No, no one is hunting those animals. I need that hunter to get in gear. Because we are going to run out of food. <laughs> Which one of you is the hunter without a ranged weapon? Me, okay, you, no hunting. You need no hunting. Of course, I put you to the one. Oh, you just joined. <laughs> um, I was confused. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Do you, what? Do you, I gave everybody weapons. How do you not have them? Okay. Welcome to the colony, Rando. Making this complicated for me. Nobody is good at hunting. I have no weapon either. So only those. Th when did I get a third person? Okay. Um. Right. So the only people who really can hunt are Suchi. Terrible at it though. Curva is also terrible at it. And AJ 
or AI who is also terrible at it. Oh boy. <laughs> Hopefully the farm is gonna get done, because I don't think they're gonna be eating any meat anytime soon. <laughs> Revenge. Hey, but look, this is important right now. I do not need you running from raccoons. You run. So real fast, as you may notice on this uh, damage spree here, and the reason I sent them into melee there without a new weapon, uh, their horde itself is a melee weapon and can do a substantial amount of damage. Uh, one good headbutt, and in this case did 11. That is not its maximum though. Uh, the fist there did a 3.8. Yeah, along with, you can see the blowgun there doing its small 2.9. The blowgun itself doesn't do a lot of damage. It's all about that toxic that's building up. Or cargo pods. Cargo pods of pot. Okay. <laughs> I don't want you guys smoking up just yet. It's too early in the colony here. They are still doing that. We need to start searching up some smithing. I could just instantly give that to myself, but I don't want to do that. So we are still on low food. So I'm going to go harvest all the berries on the map. Which is going to help out quite a bit on that problem. Oh, free turkey. Links, links. That'll be fine. Alright, gonna let these guys keep going at this for a little bit. Set you guys cook some Oni Stew. So Oni Stew, a custom food item that these guys can produce, uh, requires the pretty much basic food, food items. 0.8 nutritional raw, and what that is going to give you is, I believe it's two servings of the Oni Stew. The Oni Stew then provides a few minor buffs to manipulation and moving. Uh, this is very similar to uh, Vegetable Garden's Cheap Stew. Uh, the difference is this is primarily based upon the effects of the Demon Breath Berry. And you must have Demon Breath Berry to make the stew. So this here is that plant. It is growing slowly. Both at 100%. It's actually growing pretty good. We have feather plant leaf over here. This is similar to smoke leaf. Uh, it has slightly less negative effects. However, it's not as strong, so it's not going to give you as much joy. But it's also used in other things. And over here we have yokai pepper plant, mostly a food source, but it can also be refined into a nasty toxin, as the pepper is incredibly spicy. Y'all working on that? Okay. Now, since they can't cook that, they can also go and cook some normal, simple meals. I'm only going to do that until we have s eh, eight's good. And then we'll make everything else in the pemmican. Just everything else in the pemmican. 
Who is my cook? New person. New person is my cook. Fantastic. Did you eat some bad food? Recreation. Oh, I forgot all about recreation. My bad, people. My bad. Uh, we'll just chuck that over here for the time being. And yeah, we'll throw a wooden game of Earl over there. It's always a good idea to diversify your joy sources. None of you have hooked up and I just haven't noticed, right? Okay. Summer is hit. And Yuzi, Yumi has gone into a complete daze. I get it. Oh, meteorites. Of compacted machinery. Thank you. Dawn is looking out for us right now, and there's Dusk coming in with a mad hair. Alright. You only have that. Come on in here. A is not going to be able to do much with that thing. Oh. I underestimated you entirely, apparently. Good work. That is good work right there. You actually beat it to death with the peeler. Since you're too about throwing it, beating it to death with a big stick is fine. I need you alive, though. You're the only one here who knows how to build things. Oh, there's another set of cargo pods out there. Anything useful? Ooh, potatoes. Very useful. I don't like that bear, though. You're a scary bear. Oh, I didn't turn off the hygiene mod. I should have. Well, it's on, so need to deal with that need or they will go crazy. Wash tub. That's working out just fine. Alright, we do have some starvation going on right now, which is a problem. No, it's just Yumi. Why you stop being such a little drama queen and go over there and eat the food? Yeah, she'll pass out soon enough. Ah, oh, snap out of it. There you go. I don't need to get those beds done. Nobody's researching yet, which is a serious problem. That's because the only one who really can research is our primary constructor. <laughs> oh, that, that is a problem. Can't say I chose pawns well. I went with whatever came first. I just got rid of one alcoholism. <laughs> that's that's the only thing I modified. Probably should have done a little more, but you know. Be fair to the base game. Kill that turkey in the morning. I'm doing this the old-fashioned way. I could just use this. I mean, this is base game now. I'm just used to the old uh, alpha and beta when you didn't have the wildlife button. Alright, so as you can see, we are building up quite a bit of collection of feathers here. I think we could already build one chair. A little bit? Yeah, we could. Can we actually build some bed rolls out of this stuff? 40? Yes, we can. Might as well, you know, make some sleeping bags that aren't the ground. Try to get these comfort needs back up. Yeah, that comfort need. It's a decent barracks. I'm surprised by that. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
transport pod crash. Eh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry. You were a good scientist. Well, rot in the cold. Just the way that goes. You're, you're no use to be dead. Right, we are generating some good amount of pemmican, but pemmican just, just doesn't satisfy pawns very well. So we need that research to get done. You are working on it, so that's good. Throw down a torch in here. Will make the place a little warmer, but it will also solve the in darkness problem. Well, I'd be very happy about the inspired creativity if. Well. I had anything they could be creative with. <laughs> Winter is going to be up for all of it. This continues. <laughs> Why are you there? Uh, right. Apparently, I did not have enough sleeping bags. At least you're inside now. <laughs> uh, low slate drone. And it's hot. Eh, uh, you might need help. I'm on it. They had a good. And right, go lay down. Who's my doctor? I kind of want to build a. Whoa! Got a grizzly bear. Oh, that's hunting a cow. Okay. Get over here, people. to save that cow though. So let's uh stupid bear. I knew you were gonna be a problem. How badly is the bear uh, is the cow here? Lost an eye. Not a huge problem. You're still giving me milk, so you're you're, you're not a hindrance to me. But the good news is for you is you're not steak yet. Yeah, you get to live another day and not be steak. You are the emergency winter meat reserve, which I'm probably gonna need. <laughs> but bear meat, though, yeah, bear meat's coming in handy. All right. I think that's where we're going to stop episode one right now. We will continue this next time. Until then, I'm Maury Shep. This is Rimworld and the Oni of the Rim. <laughs>